So in the comments of my Shonen Jump tier list video, I noticed a few people asking where I'd put the likes of series like Spy X Family, Kaiju No. 8, and even One Punch Man. Now, none of these series run in Shonen Jump, and I assume the confusion logically stemmed from the fact that all of these series can be read on the Shonen Jump app in the United States, which, despite the name, is not a 100% reflection of the magazine that runs weekly in Japan and bears the same name. And I get it to an extent, even anime literacy in Western fanbases isn't the best. You still see people giving more credit to Studio Bones for the recent Pokemon music video over the director, Rie Matsumoto, or the character designer and animation director, Yuki Hayashi. As if the building itself is churning out storyboards and keyframes like it's a printing press. With manga, you at least see the individual creators getting acknowledged after their series reaches some level of success, but even that bar feels unnecessarily high. Even when it comes to Jump itself, how many mangaka can you name offhand? If I say Gege Akutami, go ahead, pause the video, and comment what manga in Shonen Jump you think they've made. No cheating, it's okay if you don't know. Okay, have you guessed? It's Jujutsu Kaisen, and maybe you knew that because its anime just started, which is understandable, honestly. But to those of you who got it right, I now want you to do the same thing for Hitsuji Gondaira. My guess is, even less of you were able to correctly choose Mission Yozakura Family, even though it's been running in Shonen Jump for over a year now. And for some of this, it is just kind of on each of us individually. I'm going to continue to try and credit mangaka when I talk about their work, and if you enjoy a manga, I'd encourage you to look up who's responsible for it. But for the rest of this video, I will do what I can to clear up some of the confusion surrounding the Shonen Jump app that many Western fans, including myself, use to read manga legally. We're going to be talking about four distinct platforms because the connection between them is key to not causing a kerfuffle. Let's start with the most basic, that being Weekly Shonen Jump proper. It's the biggest comic magazine in Japan, and by extension, the world. I'm guessing I don't have to say too much more, as if there's a manga magazine you have heard of, it's probably Shonen Jump. It's been home to hit after hit, with new series constantly vying for long-term serialization every year. This is what makes up the bulk of what's available on the Shonen Jump app, and you can tell what specifically is in the magazine by if it updates every Sunday. Sometimes Jump has break weeks or comes out early, but most consistently, it's Sunday for people in the United States or Europe. But Spy X Family also comes out on Sunday, so that might be confusing. But if you look, it's actually every other Sunday, regardless of those occasional days off Shonen Jump might have. Mangaka may occasionally take a week off, but no series in the magazine has that serialization schedule. So then, why is it on the Shonen Jump app? Well, to put it as simply as I can, the Shonen Jump app is an inconsistent collection of the series that Viz Media owns the distribution rights to in the United States. And those are in large part the series that run in Weekly Shonen Jump, but also include series that are still under Jump's parent company, Shueisha, which includes the likes of Spy X Family and Kaiju No. 8. They're on the app because they made a big splash, and Viz picked up the US publishing and distribution rights for them, which includes translations as chapters come out, like with Jump regulars. That's why One Punch Man, which is in the seinen demographic, is on the English Shonen Jump app, along with series like Twin Star Exorcist, which runs in the monthly Jump SQ, and so on. This is even more evident in the fact that on the Shonen Jump app, you cannot read either Ayakashi Triangle or Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs despite them being weekly Shonen Jump series because, ah, titties. But also specifically for Yuna, because Viz does not own the US publishing rights, Ghost Ship does, which is an entirely separate publisher underneath Seven Seas Entertainment. So yeah, a dash of confusion is honestly understandable. You can read series that aren't in Jump, but you can't always read series that are in Jump. And the confusion is only amplified since Viz's branding is, as far as I can tell, nowhere on the app itself. Sure, you can see their name next to the icon in the store, but that doesn't guarantee that a reader will know what series on the app are in Shonen Jump and licensed by Viz, and which are just licensed by Viz and happen to be on the app. Because yeah, a series like Kaguya-sama, despite being owned by Shueisha and also published by Viz, is not available on the app. So where is the consistency? But to summarize, just because it's on the Shonen Jump app does not guarantee it is in Shonen Jump proper. And if you're confused in the future, I'd recommend looking up the manga on My Anime List or Annie List or even Wikipedia, and you should be able to find what magazine it's serialized in in Japan. So then getting back to the likes of Spy X Family and Kaiju No. 8, what magazine are they serialized in if not Shonen Jump? 
In actuality, these two are a part of Shonen Jump Plus, which is often just abbreviated to Jump Plus, not a streaming service, but an online publication also run obviously by Shueisha. And there are a good bit of manga currently running in Jump Plus, with Spy X Family and Kaiju No. 8 just being two of the most prolific in recent memory. You've likely heard of at least some of the titles, as a few have gotten anime in recent years. Series like Astra Lost in Space and Oreski might ring a bell. Likewise, it's also been the home for manga serializations of original anime like Darling in the Franks and Gridman. And the plethora of manga being published under this umbrella makes sense. With no physical magazine, there's no hard limit on the amount of series that can run at any given time. Likewise, there's no one date all of the series have to be released on. You can have Tis Time for Torture Princess come out on Mondays, Kaiju No. 8 on Thursdays, and Spy X Family every other Sunday, with plenty of others in between. Also, Jump Plus is markedly less cutthroat when it comes to sales, which I will baselessly speculate leads to a greater diversity in stories since there isn't as much of a need to cultivate that core Jump audience. But that being said, recently Jump Plus is proving to be less and less of a limitation in that regard. Spy X Family, for example, has absolutely exploded in popularity, having more than 6 million copies in circulation with only 5 volumes out. It's likely to be on the list of top 10 selling manga in 2020, which is wild for something that's so new and doesn't have an anime. And the hype for Naoya Matsumoto's Kaiju No. 8 is real too. Its first volume doesn't come out until December, so it's hard to say how much that'll translate to sales, but Tatsuya Endo and Spy X Family have broken that ceiling wide open, and it's really exciting that others may be able to follow in its still young footsteps. Particularly because I'd love to see series succeed outside that usual weekly pressure. As I said, Jump Plus seems far more willing to go with the flow of its mangaka. Tatsuya Endo publishes every two weeks while also taking the occasional break when needed. And Naoya Matsumoto has said they're going to be taking one week off after every three chapters. And if mangaka can find similar levels of success while going at their own pace, then I'm all in for Jump Plus continuing to be legitimized as a platform for these stories. It's not going to change the industry overnight, but I think it could lead to a better philosophy when it comes to weekly manga and magazines like Jump. Maybe rotating breaks for mangaka, and then on their off weeks have something like a short story or piece of art that's easier to produce, so fans of the work can still enjoy that in a normal chapter's stead. I don't know, I'm just spitballing, but talk of Jump Plus does also necessitate defining one additional, separate platform, that being Manga Plus and despite its name, it is not directly related to the former. It's basically just Shueisha's version of the Shonen Jump app that they directly run. It includes some Jump Plus series, like the aforementioned Tis Time for Torture Princess, and Hokkaido Gals are super adorable. I'd also recommend both of them. Basically ones that are popular, but haven't been picked up by Viz. The Shonen Jump lineup is also available, but for people in the US, it's only the first three and most recent three chapters, which is kind of odd, but I guess it was just the deal that was worked out with Viz stateside. But it's also available in Spanish, which is pretty cool. So in summary, Weekly Shonen Jump, the Shonen Jump app, Jump Plus, and Manga Plus are all separate entities, none of which completely overlap with another. Nomenclature could definitely stand to be better, but that's what we have to live with. I don't know, I'm starting to ramble, but those are just my thoughts, and as always, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Are you a fan of any Jump Plus series? Has this video been helpful for you, and would you like to see more like it? Those thoughts and any others you may have can be left down below. Also, if you are still curious, I have not read One Punch Man, so I can't rank it. I would put Spy X Family in either the A or even S tier, I do think it's that good. And Kaiju No. 8, despite just beginning, I would put in either the B or A category. I think it's pretty solid. Thank you so much for watching though, and as always, an especially big thanks goes out to my awesome patrons, Overjoyed Soup, MV Pino, Carjose, and everyone else whose support helps make videos like these possible. Links to that Patreon if you'd like to join them, my shirts, and everything else are either down below or on the screen right now. Be sure to hit that like button and click that bell for notifications so you know whenever a new video goes up. You can also follow me on Twitter or Twitch. Thanks again for watching, stay awesome, and I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.